you are good evening everyone thank you for joining us today for the lecture series titled faculty voices lecture series by clc professors and initiative to enable students to interact more extensively with our professors through interactive sessions i mayank gupta on behalf of the placement assin council extend a very warm welcome to our esteemed speaker for today's session professor in charge professor dr alka chavla ma'am we also have with us our teacher convener dr ruchita chakrabarty ma'am it is an absolute honor to have alka ma'am amidst us as the speaker for today's session who will be addressing us on the topic copyright law through the eyes of educators and university ma'am holds a doctorate degree in copyright law from the university of delhi and has been teaching intellectual property administrative law and jurisprudence at the campus law center she has figured in the top 100 powerful women in law list released by the world ip forum in 2021 and 2017 she has also been nominated as a national expert on intellectual property by the european trade and business council ma'am has several publications to her credit which includes two books on copyright law published by macmillan and lexis nexis she has also been a resource person for several seminars workshops and courses conducted by the world intellectual property organization us patent and trademark office university grants commission to name a few ma'am has always been a source of inspiration and guidance for the students of campus law center and we sincerely believe that the students will learn immensely from her years of expertise in the field of copyright law with this i would again like to express my heartfelt gratitude to alka ma'am and extend a very warm welcome to her for being here with us today thank you so much ma'am now i request um, our teacher convener dr ruchita chakrabarty ma'am to say a few words thank you ma'am thank you mayank and mostly thank you ma'am for accepting our invitation and you know gracing uh, our occasion today uh, well uh, i think all i can say is thank you first of all it's an honor for me to listen to you personally because i'm not i've not been a student of du and you have never taught me but i've only heard how beautifully you teach admin jurists and all other uh, subjects so i think i am extremely happy that uh, uh, today i have this opportunity to listen to you and uh, i will not take much time ma'am anyway uh, you know you have always been at personal level also you've always been there so uh, today i'm extremely happy that i'm going to listen to um, i'm going to listen to a stalwart in uh, the field speak today so i'm extremely happy and excited and i'm sure all my students are also similarly happy and excited because the reason that we thought of this lecture series is Uh, you know that better interaction between teachers and students especially the well known clc faculties across the country so people die to listen to you people so we're giving that opportunity to students thank you so much ma'am again thank you all the students for being a part of this webinar thank you ruchita thank you mayank uh, very very good evening to all of you uh, in fact i feel like a guest <laughs> you know i thought my second home was campus law center because i have been here since 1980 ma'am it um, is ma'am it is your home is... only we all have come here <laughs> <laughs> the but the way you introduced me i thought i was a guest to campus law center anyway but these are the formalities so you know as you've been telling me to talk on this i was wondering what should i talk on because this is a slightly technical area and unless and until you have some introduction about it one cannot talk about a specific problem so i would like to be first you know how i am going to deal with this is i'm going to give a very general outlook of what copyright law looks like and then what we can do is we can talk about certain issues in the university uh, which you can take up and then if anybody wants to ask a question or maybe even in between i would uh, be most willing to give an answer if you uh, need to ask so uh, coming now to some of the questions i think uh, you know any subject when we start with we should start with certain questions in our mind now this is not going forward it's not moving the slide mom just try using arrow keys mom if it's possible mom try using what arrow keys mom left right arrow keys or uh, Uh, that's what i'm using it's not going down okay ma'am it has gone it's it's all right all right late, yeah. so uh, these are the questions that i'm going to deal with first of all you know uh, what is copyright law what is the act which is dealing with it so it is the copyright act 1957 and you know if you look at one of the, i i will not make it very section specific 
But just to begin with, I'm giving you sections. If you look at section 16 of the Copyright Act, it says that copyright is a statutory right. That means for everything, we will have to go to the Act. Since there is a specific provision with regard to this, it says no copyright except as provided by the Act. So therefore, uh, I would have to refer to some of the sections. I would try to minimize it. All right, the second thing which we need to know is, uh, first of all, you know, whenever there is any work which is present for which we are talking about copyright, we should know whether it falls within the domain of the copyright law or not. For that, we have section 13 of the Copyright Act, which gives you the subject matter of copyright. Now, the moment you identify the work, then you need to know who has created the work and is the creator the owner of the copyright or not? Because it may happen sometimes that the author of the work or the creator of the work does not hold the copyright. So it is very, very important to know the difference between the author and the owner. Next, what we need to know is that what are the rights that a particular person have? And if that person has those rights, are the rights being infringed? Or there is some, you know, in Copyright Act, there's a specific provision, which is called fair dealing provision. It's section 52, which is running into four pages of the act. And there are about 44 to 46 clauses in it, which tells you that there are certain activities which are not to be covered uh, by infringement. And then the various people who are covered by the Copyright Act are the authors, the performers, and the broadcasting organizations. Now, to put things together, what I'm trying to say is, when does a Copyright Act apply? It applies when you have the, this is what, when you have a literary work or an artistic work or dramatic or a musical work, or it is anything related to cinematograph films or sound recordings. Now, this is what is the subject matter of copyright. So if there is a painting, yes, copyright would be applicable. There is a music, copyright would be applicable. There's a sculpture, copyright would be applicable. Because if you look at, I cannot go into the definitions, but the entire definition of the literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic work is given under section two. What is a cinematograph film? What is a sound recording is also given under section two of the Copyright Act. But you name a thing, anything which you create, say when you write something, it will be called a literary work, whatever you may write. You write your notes in the class, you have copyright in that. You make a painting in your, or you make a cartoon, or you sketch a drawing, you have a copyright in it. The moment you create the work, the copyright comes into existence because copyright comes automatically, meaning thereby that there is no system of registration which is mandated for creating of a copyright. There is a system of registration, but that is optional. Even if you don't register any of your works, you have a copyright in that work. You know, this is where many people uh, commit a wrong. They think that since they're not registered, they don't have a copyright. But I'm telling you, the moment a work is created, you have a copyright in that work. And the work, if it is literary, dramatic, musical, artistic, cinematograph films, sound recordings, that is how we proceed further. All right. Now, since the word given is original, uh, we need to know what is the meaning of original. You know, one of the basic criteria under copyright law is that the copyright does not vest in an idea. The copyright does not vest in an inspiration. The copyright vests only when a work is created. Work means when you give an expression to an idea. The question is, why is it that we don't protect ideas under copyright law? Let's take an example of Bollywood films, right? From the day I was born till date, I think the main theme of any film is romance. Now, the, if the idea of romance is copyrighted means the idea of romance is monopolized I'm by sure. one person. Then you will find that none of the people 
who make any story around the idea of romance would be protected by copyright. So therefore, the copyright law is to promote creativity. It is not to stop creativity. The idea of copyright law is to create cultural activity and not to stop that cultural activity. So for this purpose, ideas are not protected. Ideas are not monopolized under copyright law. What is protected or monopolized under copyright law is the creation that you create. So whether it is the idea of romance or it is Saas Bahu or it is living together or anything, you know, fight between somebody or life insurance policy because of life insurance, you kill someone and then you are the nominee from riches to, you know, from poor people to riches, how different people get together. None of these ideas are protected under copyright law. So therefore, copyright, I've said, copyright is not concerned with originality of the ideas, but it is in the form of the expression. The expression has to originate from the author. If the expression originates from the author, then a work is created. Now, many times what happens is you create a work and I also create a work sitting at some different place. We have no connection with each other and the work is somewhat similar. Now, the question is, how do we find out whose work is original and who has copied from another? If you're able to give evidence to show that there was no connection between two parties, then both of them would be considered as the creator, the owner of the copyright of the work that they have created. So what the author has to show is in order to be treated as an original work is, he or she must show that he had used some kind of a labor and this labor emerged from the person's intellect and it is this intellect which was shown on the paper. Now, you know, since the word original, uh, you will find it is not defined anywhere in any of the countries, whether it is US, UK, India, nowhere the word original is defined. So we will have to go by the cases to find out what is the meaning of how do you create an original work. Previously, uh, how the law has developed this because the law is still developing. Initially, the doctrine that was applicable was sweat of the brow, meaning that the moment you have spended some kind of a resource or any labor on your part to create a work, it was said that you've created an original work. Then came the second doctrine where it was said that it is not simply sweat. There has to be some skill along with the sweat. So if there is a skill along with sweat, then only you create an original work. Then third came a concept now, especially you know when you make compilations, that it is not sweat, not simply skill. There has to be some kind of a creativity which has to be present. Now these words are not defined anywhere. So as and when the situation arises before the court, a decision is taken, whether it is simply a case of sweat or it is a case of sweat plus skill, or it is a case of sweat, skill and creativity. And then you find out whether a work is created or not. You know, um, to give you a few examples, uh, I don't know how many you must have seen all these uh, movies, <clears throat> you know, E.T., extraterrestrial, and then Koi Mil Gaya. Now, the moment you see Koi Mil Gaya, you find out that, you know, that there is this uh, person, Jadu, if any one of you, I think most of you must have seen that movie. So there is this Jadu who has to have sunlight in order to, you know, live. He is from some other planet. The same thing was there in E.T. also. Now, this is an idea. Coming, there is an alien coming to or extraterrestrial coming to Earth. Anyone can make use of this idea and create a story. And each story maker would be referred to as an author of the work. Okay. So the idea of originality or the concept of originality does not have a very strict test. It has a low test which has to be applicable. Now, this is the case which I've given to you. EBC, which is Eastern Book Company case. This came in 2008. And where from sweat of the brow to skill and judgment to minimum of creativity test was applicable. Uh, using this case, a number of uh, decisions have come and most of them are by Delhi High Court. 
uh, where I've given you some of the decisions. The first one is where, you know, uh, you have this DNA sequencing in hybrid seeds. When you draw a DNA sequence for a hybrid seed, the question is, or you write about it, is it an original literary work? The court said that no, it is not, because DNA sequence in a seed is merely, uh, you know, it is telling you about the nature and there is no creativity which was involved. And since there is no creativity, the sequence does not have any originality. And since it does not have originality, therefore it would not be given protection under copyright law. Similarly, I don't know how many of you use uh, homeopathic medicines. You know, the, the, there are Requid series, R1, R2 for this, R3 for that. Uh, these people that made these series, uh, uh, the Requid people, and uh, somebody else also used a similar kind of series and the matter went to the court and the court said that no, these, you know, giving names of series is not, there is no creativity involved. So you do not have a copyright uh, in this kind of a series being created. Then again, uh, Delhi High Court, while dealing with information and facts from cricket matches, uh, like what is the cricket score? The court said that all this is in public domain. So there is, it is lacking originality. These are facts in public domain. So therefore there is no creativity, no original work which has been created. Uh, there have been a few more judgments, but I'm not going with the judgments, more of such judgments. Now coming to, as I said, the first thing is you have to find out whether there is a work which is present worth copyrightable or not. That's the first thing. Secondly, you come to that idea is not protected, only expression is protected. Third, as far as literary, dramatic, musical works are concerned, they have to be original in nature. So what is the meaning of original? Original means the, the expression has to come from you. The idea may be somebody else's idea. Now, once you come to this, then you have to find out what are the rights that a creator has. Now, when we talk about rights, you know, if you look at Copyright Act, there are a number of sections which deal with rights. The first section, which is the most important, is section 14, which says copyright means, and it gives a number of rights. What it does is, it will first talk about literary work and then tell you what are the rights of the owner of literary work. Then we'll come to dramatic work, musical work, artistic work, cinematograph films, sound recordings. For every work, there are different kinds of rights which are present. Just to, uh, I cannot enumerate all the rights, but just to tell you, uh, in a very layman's language, or the rights which are overlapping everywhere are right to reproduce. Say, for example, I've written a story, then only I can reproduce it. And how do I reproduce? I can write a novel about it. I can make a poem for it. I can make a film out of it. I can, you know, uh, I can only translate. So what now I do is I cannot be a jack of all trades. So what I will do, if you are a filmmaker, I will assign my copyright to you for the purposes of making of a film. So only the right of making of a film goes to you, rest of the rights remain with me. You know, copyright is a singular term, but there are a number of rights which are involved under copyright. The rights are right to reproduce, the right to translate, the right to make a film, the right to public performance. That means every right vests with me. Now, just imagine if I am the creator, I can make money out of so many activities. I can tell A for making a film in Punjabi. I can tell B for making a film in English. I can tell C to make a translation. I can tell D to make an abridgment. I can tell E to do something else. So all these A, B, C, D, E people, whatever they create, they will have a copyright in that work, but in the original work, the copyright rests with me. Okay, so one work, so many owners. That is why you will find out copyright law tends to become slightly more technical than any other subject because you have to identify the parties involved, the stakeholders involved in a particular work. Uh, this is what section 14 gives and why it is called exclusive economic rights is because section 14 gives you rights which can create money for you. And because they can create money for you, therefore you call them economic rights, okay? 
The second kind of rights which are present under the Copyright Act are moral rights. Moral rights are given under international conventions, but as far as our Copyright Act is concerned, we call them special rights. There are two kinds of rights which are given under moral rights. The first one is uh, right to paternity and the second is right to integrity. To give you an example, you know, I, write the, I wrote this book on uh, copyright law and I assigned my right copyright to LexisNexis. Now, when I assign my right to LexisNexis, then I cannot do anything with my book now. I stand in the same position with respect to the book as all of you. I cannot make a copy. I cannot print it. I cannot take passages from it without infringing the copyright of LexisNexis. So something which is very, very important is when you assign your rights, you should remember which right to assign, which right to give on license. That means should you give a complete copyright to someone or should you keep something with you? This is a place where I also fall in that category. I mean, because when I wrote a book, I was not into any kind of profit making. I just wrote it because LexisNexis people asked me to write. Now, but some people, what they do is they want to make money out of it. So when you have to make money, you have to be clear that you keep the copyright with you. Give only the right of publishing to the publisher. Because if you assign all your rights, you stand in the same position as all the readers. So you're like any XYZ reader and you're only the author. So why moral rights are important are, what LexisNexis cannot do is, they cannot put the name, they cannot change the name of the author because right to paternity vests with me for all times to come. That is called a special right. So under section 14, exclusive economic rights are given, which belong to the owner of the copyright, which is like LexisNexis, but moral rights belong to me. And one of the moral rights is right to paternity. That means I would always be the father of that particular work. That means I would always be the author of that book. The name of the author cannot be changed. The second moral right, which is present or the special right, what we refer to as is right to integrity. The whatever is written in my book, it cannot be mutilated. You cannot, in, uh, mutilated means you cannot change it in a manner which brings disrepute to me. Like for example, you may give certain cases or you know interpret it in a manner that uh, anybody would say, <laughs> copyright expert, this is what she's written. That is something you can't do to my book. So economic Thanks. rights can vest with the publisher, but the moral rights will keep vesting with me. You know, as uh, copyright law was developing, there were certain uh, people who felt that they should also be protected. One of them is performers. Let me take an example now. Ruchita has invited me. Mayank has invited me for giving this lecture to you. Now I come, you as what you're doing, you're recording the lecture. So when you record the lecture, next time you say, Kaun bulai salka chabla ko? Hai to si hai paas recording. So what you will do is, you will play my recording and you will play the PPT. Now because of my recording, I have become unemployed. So who becomes my competitor? My recording becomes my own competitor. I give a dance performance, I sing somewhere, I charge money for it. And next time, those very people, they don't invite me, knowing fully well that the recording is with them, why should they invite me? So again, just giving an example, I become unemployed. So my own recordings, resulted in my unemployment. So the performers were facing a problem. So performers made a lobby and they said that our rights need to be protected. So under section 38 of the Copyright Act, certain rights are given to the performers and they are called neighboring rights. And why they're called neighboring rights is because performer is a neighbor to the creator of the work for communicating the work to public, right? 
for example, if in this case, I'm talking about myself, I'm the performer and I'm the person who's giving it to you. But there may be a situation. Example, somebody wants to say something? Say, for example, there is a play and there are people acting in the play. There is a film. There are people acting in the film. Now, what you do is you take a part of that, you know, uh, performance and you show it somewhere else or something else and you start making money out of it. So the performers are saying, no, you cannot do that because it is my performance. Without my permission, you cannot record it. So there are certain rights given to the performers under Section 38 of the Copyright Act. Similarly, broadcast reproduction rights, meaning there are broadcasting organizations, they have also been given certain rights. Now, the question that may be asked is, why only performers in broadcasting organizations? You know, there's a saying which, uh, you know, we very often in Punjabi use, Jab tak bachcha roega nahi, maadud pilaegi nahi. Meaning that unless and until you fight for your rights, you will not be given something on a platter. So performers fought, they received something. Broadcasting organizations formed a lobby, they received something. So as and when the people are rising and asking for something, like recently, you know, in 2008, it's not that recent now, a decade has already passed. In 2012, there was an amendment made to the Copyright Act. And why the amendment was made was that, you know, uh, there were composers and uh, lyricists. They have written something way back. And now what is happening, uh, you know how the film industry works is, suppose I am a lyricist, I have written a song. I assign that song to the producer of the film. I am the composer of the music. I assign my music rights to the producer. So everyone is assigning rights to the producer. Producer is the one person who's now in hold of all the rights. He becomes very powerful. Now, suppose he wants to use the lyrics, if he wants to use the music, and what you refer to as uh, remixes. You, uh, some say, for example, T-series comes to me and I'm the producer and they say that Kanta Laga Gana Ji Hamko Sunna Hai, but you know that Kanta Laga, that song is very good, but we want a better beat here. So you give the rights to us. So what the producer is doing is, producer is giving the rights to somebody else, making money out of it, but not giving a penny of it to either the lyricist or the initial music composer because they don't have any rights now. It is the producer who's having the rights. So what happens in this kind of a situation? Uh, an amendment comes, all these authors, whether the lyricists or the music composers, they get together and they move to the Ministry of HRD and they tell them that this is unfair. Our rights should never be assigned. Whenever the producer is using the work created by us, we should be taken into account. We should be given some kind of, you know, uh, some kind of a share has to be given to us. So uh, this kind of an amendment came in 2012. So as and when lobbies are there, as and when pressures are created, this is how copyright law is evolving. So we find out that, you know, copyright law is an area which is in the stage of evolution and which is in the stage of uh, more and more development which is coming. And this is creating more stakeholders. And that is why I think more people should have joined to know uh, the subject because this is a place where a lot of money is being created. So this reminds me because it is the placement council which has uh, developed this. I think you were told by Singh and Singh Company that there are, if you join a firm, there are two divisions in a firm. I'm just going off the track copyright, which is telling you. There are normally what happens is there are two, three divisions which are working. You will have to decide for yourself which one would you like to join for IPR. One is the prosecution team, which is doing a lot of filing work. The second is the litigation team, which gets into the cases. And the third is just the corporate team, which may be getting into signing of contracts or making agreements, et cetera. So as, uh, but for all these three, you will find for one, procedure is important, but for the second and the third branches, knowing of the substantive law is very, very important. So 
uh, coming back to the rights now, we have exclusive economic rights, we've got special rights, moral rights, we've got uh, the rights belonging to the broadcasting organizations, we have rights which belong to the performers. So we need to identify who you are, what is the work that you have created, what are the rights that you have, and for all this, you will have to go to the Copyright Act. Now, uh, one thing which is, uh, you know, whenever there is a right, you talk about infringements. So when you talk about infringements, you need to know where, who has the jurisdiction. Under section 62 of the Copyright Act, the district court under whose jurisdiction the plaintiff resides or where he carries on business or work for gain. You know, under the normal rule under CPC is where uh, the defendant is residing. But in this case, uh, in order to help the creator, a special rule has been created. That is, you can file a case where the plaintiff is residing. And you will find that, you know, whenever there is uh, any kind of this kind of a substantive law, remedies are very important for us to know because unless and until we know the remedies, we cannot execute our rights, we cannot implement our rights, we cannot stop our, our rights from being infringed. So uh, I will talk about the reliefs available. Uh, there are two kinds of, uh, I've not mentioned here, but there are, you can, you know, uh, you can either have a civil remedy or you can have a criminal remedy. You can simultaneously have civil, you can simultaneously file a civil suit or a criminal suit. There is no bar that just because you filed a civil suit, you can't file a criminal suit. So as far as reliefs under Section 55 are concerned, you injunctions are which can be given are, uh, you must have done in your CPC also, Anton Pillar orders, Mariva injunctions, John Doe order, Norwich order, dynamic injunctions. Uh, you can ask for damages. You can ask for account of profits. I thought I'll just tell you what these injunctions are. The first one, and you know, these uh, injunctions are playing a very important role under copyright law. Because the moment you get an injunction, there is no need for you to continue with the suit because your work is done. Meaning, one stay given, you're, you know, you've achieved what you wanted to achieve. So people don't carry forward, you know, their cases. Anton Miller order is named after the case in which it came for the first time. Here what happens is, if I'm the creator of a work, I find that my work is being infringed, I will get an order ex parte from the court. No notice is served upon the defendant. So when I go to the court, the court will appoint court commissioners. Now these court commissioners can enter the infringer's premises and they can carry out the inspection to identify whether there is any kind of infringement of copyright or not. So what is happening is, by me taking the step, the defendant is taken by surprise. So when he's taken by surprise, he cannot destroy the infringing evidence. So uh, you know, uh, when you join, you will find, uh, you know, especially the third years, when you get into practice, uh, you will find now that we have the commercial now we have the commercial courts and we have got an IP division also specifically working. Uh, there are at the moment two judges who are working in the IP division. If I'm not wrong, are Pratibha Singh and uh, Jyoti, uh, whatever her name is. So they would always ask uh, young lawyers who are interested to become, you know, uh, court commissioners. You let us know, give your names. And uh, this kind of a work is given to the young lawyers because a hefty amount of fees is also paid. So just by one go, you can uh, go with the police, raid a particular premises. And what you need to do there is you have to make a list of the items um, that were there and you can even seal them and then the report is submitted to the court. So this is what is Anton Pillar order. By Mariva injunction, you can freeze the assets of the defendants. And you know, if both Anton Pillar and Mariva injunction are both of them are working together, you can actually destroy the defendant's business. So uh, when the injunctions became very common, in one of the judgments, in fact, the other day in Lutra also I was mentioning, just as Ravinder Bhatt said, that let's not be so liberal in granting injunctions to any plaintiff who comes to us. So a plaintiff has to do a lot of homework show to the court 
uh, you know, uh, that there is definitely infringement going on. And only then uh, Meriva injunction and uh, Anton Pillar orders are given. The third one is John Doe or Roving or Ashok Kumar order. Now, why these names are given are because Ashok Kumar is a very common name in our country and John is a very common name in the English world. And Roving is you just uh, rove around to find out who is the one who's infringing. Injunctions are always issued against a particular person whose name is given. But you know, copyright cases, you will find out, you do not know the name and identity of the culprit. Like for example, what happens is, uh, this has become very common, especially uh, with uh, the Bollywood. The moment a film is released, you know that for sure, something is going to happen and piracy is going to take place. So what the producers now do is, they have this Ashok Kumar order in their hand. And Ashok Kumar order or the John Doe order means, that even when you do not know who the culprit is, uh, you can empower the court commissioner to uh, visit the premises of those places where you have a reason to believe that infringement is taking place. Like, you know, it started with Singham movie and now it has, it has become very common. Uh, this was for the first time on 20th of July, 2011, when this order came uh, in favor of Reliance Big Entertainment uh, for Singham movie. Unnamed, most important thing here is unnamed and undisclosed persons. You know, for copyright law, uh, the uh, law and technology, you know, they cannot go on simultaneously. Technology is much faster than law. So what do we do? Uh, the, uh, you know, the judges are all the time on their feet and especially the lawyers, how to curb infringement. And one of the injunctions that they have come up with is the dynamic injunction. Dynamic injunction is, uh, suppose, you know, when you approach a court uh, to extend uh, for an injunction, an injunction is passed. This is happening especially for online locations. Like you have, uh, uh, you may have uh, alkachapla.com. And then, you know, alkachapla.com is uh, doing some kind of an infringing activity. You have an injunction against alkachapla.com. But immediately thereafter, what I do is I create alkachapla1.com. So there is no injunction against alkachabla1.com. So the very next moment I'm able to take up an activity and you cannot go to the court immediately. So the court thought, what should we do? So they started giving dynamic injunctions. Dynamic injunctions are that the main injunction is being extended to even the mirror websites, uh, which are providing access to the infringing activity. So uh, this is uh, the latest injunction that has been added by the courts. Account of profits, uh, I don't know how much time I'm taking. Account of profits is uh, when you, uh, you know, uh, defendant has infringed your copyright. So you find out how much of profit has been made by the defendant because of your work, right? So you'll have to go into the account books of that person. And then accordingly, the courts grant orders uh, damages is also very important because traditionally we were following the compensatory damage remedy, but now there are a number of cases where the courts are uh, ordering not only compensatory but punitive damages that you knew that you are piggy riding on someone. And because of this knowledge, you need to be heavily uh, penalized. So these two kinds of damages are given. As far as criminal remedies are concerned, you can file a criminal case. And uh, something which is very important here is that <clears throat> for first conviction, the uh, punishment is less, but mandatory. Uh, second conviction, the minimum mandatory rises. Uh, but if you look at, you know, the amounts 5,000 to 50,000 to 2 lakh or 1 lakh as being mandatory, that is nothing. Uh, as far as the copyright cases go. So there is a lot of move to say that the monetary offenses, you know, the limit should be raised. Anyway, now this, I've given you a general idea of copyright law. Would anybody want to ask anything? And then I'll proceed further, which I think which is very important for me as a law department or university. And something now that I'm going to speak is important for students and teachers also. Yes, anybody wants to ask a question? Um, does a person include a juristic person as well? Uh, 
Can you give me an example when you said would a person include a juristic person? Ma'am, uh, you were saying about uh, injunctions, right? You were saying that injunctions can be granted against the persons only. So I'm asking that uh, the juristic persons like company and all, can, a jun- can an injunction be uh, taken against them also? Yes. Because if you're safe in the name of a firm or a company or, you know, um, what, say, for example, T-Series, it's a company, right? Uh, say there's another company who are indulging in any kind of a piracy, uh, pirate, uh, pirated activity. Piracy is a term which is not given under the Copyright Act, but that's a term which we normally use for any kind of an infringement of copyright. So injunctions can be issued against them. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, ma'am, I have a question that if someone, if the originator hasn't claimed the copyright and then he finds the fact that uh, the, it has been uh, exploited to some extent and ma'am, is there a remedy that there he can approach the court and ask for that injunction? All right. First of all, you don't have to claim a copyright. Okay. The moment you create work, copyright vests in you. So you don't need to claim it. Okay, is that clear? Yes. The moment you create a work, the copyright vests in you. Say, for example, you're writing you're writing notes in a class. You have a copyright in your notes. You don't have right. to register it somewhere. Is anyone else? Ma'am, there are a few questions in the chat box as well. All right. Uh, my uncle. Ma'am, I just I just take those questions, ma'am. Um, uh-huh. Mom, once right. you guys ask me, can the moral me. rights be transferred to, can be transferred or licensed? Uh, no, moral rights cannot be transferred or licensed. There is no assignment for them. It's only the exclusive economic rights which can be licensed or assigned to someone. Mom, the next question is, uh, for example, if an artist draws something and takes reference from a photograph clicked by a professional photographer, so do we have a copyright for the artwork made since it was made using a reference? Uh, well, that's a uh, very general question that you've asked, but in any case, I'll tell you. You uh, Okay, I will not answer this question for the timing. Uh, where, where I'll, I'll show you. I think I missed out on that uh, part. I haven't talked about... All right. How are my slides? Actually, how are my slides running? I'll give you... Uh, there's something which is called fair dealing provision. Okay. I'll talk about that first, and that would be an answer to your question. Uh, one second. I'll just skip this. All right. Uh, right of reproduction is subjected to exceptions and limitations. That means, as the question that you've asked is, somebody has clicked a picture, somebody has drawn a drawing, somebody has written an article, somebody has written a novel. Can you take a portion of it and make use of it? The answer to this is yes, but how much? There is no percentage given, but what, you know, Bern Convention is a convention to which all the countries are a party to. So what article 9.2 of the Bern Convention says is that we leave this to individual countries. They can have exceptions with regard to right of reproduction, but two conditions have to be fulfilled. The first one is that such a reproduction does not conflict with the normal exploitation of the work. And secondly, it should not unreasonably prejudice the legitimate interest of the author. Let me give you an example, which is a very, very peculiar example of our country. Bharat. Shadi mein dula jata hai, ghode pe chadke, with all those sera veras, and people are dancing in front of him. Now, this is something that you will not find anywhere else. It is very peculiar to our country. Now, what happens is that you know how it works. Barat mein aap ja rahe hai, aapne peeli chadha li aur bolne lage, bhai ye gana chalega, bhai wo gana chalega. Ab bhai gana to chalega, lekin kahan se lao ge gana? Gana has to be from some film. Ab now, if you were supposed to take permission of the person who's, you know, written or the person who's given music for it, I think that will go off. Where is the dance? Nothing is happening because you are busy taking permissions. And the entire fun of dancing in front of the groom goes away. So this is an exception 
which our country has provided saying that this kind of a reproduction of a work does not in any way affect the author does not in any way prejudice the legitimate interest of the author so this is an exception right second exception which may be given is let's see i've given you a few exceptions here fair dealing with any work for the purposes of private or personal use aapne apne use ke liye apni research ke liye you're using something whether paragraphs or works that would not amount to infringement when you're using some work for criticism or review that would not amount to infringement you're reporting current events or current affairs that would not amount to infringement okay i'm just giving you there are around 46 clauses i'll just give you some 3 4 in order for you to uh, understand what it means now the second one is which is very important for all of us is the reproduction of any work by a teacher or a pupil in the course of the instruction or as a part of the questions to be answered in an examination or in answers to such questions you know this part uh, was in uh, quite a controversy uh, i think all of you must have seen in delhi school of economics there is a photocopy shop uh, which is called rameshwari photocopy now uh, what the delhi school of economics was doing was the professors there as we have our case material our case material consists of cases on which there is no copyright anyone can pick up and uh, you know use them but uh, for economics what you do is you pick up chapters from books or you pick up certain articles and you make a reference a kind of uh, uh, you know course material and you tell the students this is what you have to read now what students will do is they will not buy books so what they will do is they will get this portion xeroxed or uh, i should not use the word xerox they should uh, they would get it photostatted so when they get it photostatted so what rameshwari photocopy shop does is before the students arrive and individually come and tell him to make such photocopies he makes bundles and keeps it in his uh, shop so now the question is does it amount to infringement so the court uh, the matter you know it went on till the supreme court and uh, this is i think a beautiful judgment especially given by the high court judge justice endlo has given a beautiful judgment you must all read it rameshwari photocopy case where uh, uh, 652 i was used it's important for all of us as teachers because sometimes you know we uh, don't uh, give our students the entire work thinking that we would be violating or infringing copyright but now this case has made it very clear that reproduction of reproduction means the entire work reproduction it is not talking about any percentage the reproduction of any work by a teacher in the course of instruction when given to students is not infringement now i we are law people but there may be say uh, uh, you know a theater class or a music class or a film class here even giving showing of films showing of pictures showing of music giving music to them would not result in any kind of infringement right in a question paper when i make a question paper i can pick up any quote without giving a footnote that would not amount to infringement you write answers especially no b uh, the problem is that on, uh, i don't know whether it's a problem or not nobody is failing because you are just copying answers i'm not saying all of you are doing it but many students are doing it when you copy i cannot say that you have infringed copyright uh anyway this is a controversial thing so i will not go further but the only thing is uh, when you write answers you can even you know copy from anywhere and write there would not be any copyright issue that would come into existence what is the meaning of in the course of instruction that the uh, the court said that especially for teachers when they start preparing you know sometimes you feel a teachers ka kaam kya hai ek ghanta padha hai aur chal diye you know but to study for that one hour you do not know how much we have to study prior to coming to the class you ask a question and then we have to think about the question and find an answer for it that also takes time so what is imparting of instruction it is not that one hour of class it begins with the semester and ends with the examination right this i'm going to skip now so uh, i i know what your question is i'll come to that but let me just finish this so one thing a teacher can give anything to the students 
can reproduce anything for the students, but it has to be in the course of the activities. So as far as teachers are concerned, please be uh, happy. You can use anything in class. Let's come to now section 521J. This is very important, especially to uh, our student union for our cultural activities, for our societies, which are doing a lot of you know, uh, work of plays and um, uh, et cetera, theater, et cetera. What section 521J says is because you know uh, many times, even till date, people do not know of these provisions and they are infringing copyright. And in fact, let me tell you, law faculty is also infringing copyright of people uh, and mindlessly and happily doing it and nobody is bringing any action against them. Say, for example, one of the things that we do is we call guests to speak here. We record their lectures without their permission and we put it on YouTube for everyone. Now, this is an infringement of the performer's rights. but. Why nobody questions is because they're happy that they're getting publicity. But let me tell you, this amounts to infringement. We'll talk about it later. Let's come down to section 521J, which says performance in the course of, an, course of the activities of an educational institution, literary, dramatic or musical work by the staff and students of the institution, or what is it? Presentation of a, you know, or a cinematograph film or sound recording. If if the important thing is, if the audience is limited to such, uh, such teachers, students, parents, guardians of the students and persons connected with the activities of the institution. You know, many times what happens is uh, in festivals, uh, when you hold festivals, you are performing and you're making it open to anyone and everyone to come. If that is done, it amounts to infringement. Because what section 521J is allowing is only when the audience is limited to such students, such teachers, such parents and guardians of the students. So you cannot call anyone from outside. But again, as I'm saying, uh, people still do not know about these provisions and they are not even taking them seriously. Uh, but a time may come when uh, you know we may face certain problems. Uh, library exceptions. These are, you know, how much of a book can you have in the library or uh, can you keep, can you digitalize your books which are present in the library? Now, there are two exceptions given in the Copyright Act. Uh, I think I'm taking too much of time, uh, Ruchita. Anyway, doesn't matter. No, ma'am, uh, you can continue. So library exceptions are, the first one is storing of a work in any medium electronic means by a non-commercial, non-profit making library, that's commercial public library for preservation if the library already possesses a non-digital copy. That means if I have a physical copy in the library, only then can I, ha I have a non-digital copy. Secondly, I can only make three copies of a book provided the book is not available for sale in India. If anything apart from this a library does, it amounts to infringement of work. Now, uh, I'll just leave person. Now, this is, uh, I'll leave persons with disability. I'll talk about it later. There is something which is called copyright and plagiarism. Okay. We've, uh, at least all of us who are writing, we are sick and tired of the plagiarism policies. Whether you're a PhD student or an LLM student or a teacher writing something, you have to get the plagiarism check done. Okay. Now, as far as plagiarism and copyright are concerned, these are two distinct terms. Plagiarism is basically enforced by an organization. Like, for example, I work for Delhi University. The Delhi University may have a plagiarism policy. It's a moral issue. It's an ethical issue. It's an organizational norm issue. So, you can bring an action against me to enforce plagiarism, but it may not be a case of copyright infringement. I cannot be taken to court for that. Okay, I'll again repeat. Very often what, what happens is we, you know, we use these terms as substitutes, but they're not substitutes of each other. 
plagiarism is a common english language what it means is when someone else's work is passed off as if it was your work so this is a moral ethical issue every organization many organizations i wouldn't say every organization many organizations but till date most of the organizations don't have their ipr policies but they only you know they follow certain you're just taken by surprise one day so organizations are enforcing plagiarism copyright infringement is a legal framework for pursuing damages in someone who wrongfully violates the exclusive rights which you've got under section 14 37 38 etc and for copyright infringement you will have to go to the court of law for plagiarism you don't go to the court both are similar in some aspects but distinctively different now this is what you can do and you will get an answer to the question whosoever that girl was asking a question can you quote paras from someone's work with proper attribution the answer is yes can you par paraphrase or pick up ideas but with proper attribution again the answer is yes can you show a film or a song to your students in the course of teaching the answer is yes can you give links to your students and say that you go to such and such site the answer is yes because links amount to an address so what you are doing is you are giving only an address right you are not reproducing the work as far as teachers and students are concerned under section 521i we don't have any problem but let's talk about any other person can any other person give a link to someone and not result in copyright infringement the answer is yes there is no copyright infringement because you are only telling an address aapne address bataya ki ha yahan pe chale jaiye aapko yahan par wo cheez milegi you've not reproduced it so giving of links does not amount to violation of copyright can you make copies of work in an accessible format for persons with disability the answer again is yes because this is what we have for persons with disability there is section 52 as i said certain acts not amounting to infringement there is this provision clause zb which is given and this zb talks about adaptation reproduction issue of copies or communication to the public in any work in any accessible format so any person to facilitate persons with disability any organization working for the benefit of the persons with disability you can convert a work into an accessible format now what happens is generally when you convert a work into an accessible format it amounts to infringement but in 2012 this amendment came i remember when i was a student of campus law center there were some visually impaired students in our batch so what we used to do was we used to you know record uh, the lectures for them and record the uh, case material for them now of course you have a lot of different kinds of softwares which have come up uh, at that point of time doing this amounted to infringement of copyright but today after 2012 it does not amount to infringement of copyright because we have a special provision with regard to persons with disability all right So going further with the examples, and you uh, for writing reviews, I have to write a review for a song or a you know or a book. It's per force. I will have to take the paragraphs. Now the question that you've asked is: there is somebody's photograph which you pick up and you give a reference and you make something else out of it. Is that what your question was? The answer is yes. You can do it because. you may still create something original because what we have said is on an you know it always depends upon what is the work that you are taking let me give you an example then i'll come to your photograph example what you cannot do is you cannot substantially pick up somebody's work now this is an example which i was giving in class also while teaching suppose there is a book please listen to this carefully suppose there's a book which consists of 400 pages it's some kind of a novel or a story written and uh it's running okay and let's have a report of a report on some aspect which is also 400 pages now the difference between the book and the report is that in the report last 10 pages are called summary conclusion and recommendation now that means 
those 10 pages are the crux of the entire 400 pages. Now, what you do is you have two things before you. One is this book of 400 pages and the other is this report of 400 pages. Now, from this book, you take 10 pages and you acknowledge me. That would not amount to substantial taking. What you do is you take 10 pages of summary, conclusion, recommendation of my report. You acknowledge it that you've taken from there, but you give it as you know, part of your work. That may amount to infringement because what you've done is you've taken the substantial work which was given as a crux in those 10 pages. You now, have you heard of this song, Selfie Le Le Re, Selfie Le Le Re? You know, this person, I'm forgetting his name. I always forget his name. He really fought for his, uh, you know, copyright. Now, selfie to aaj kal badi common hai. Sab log selfie lete hai, selfie lete lete, mar bhi gaya hai log. Koi balcony se gir gaya, koi nadi mein gir gaya, koi mountain cliff se gir gaya. So, mera kehne ka matlab yeh, selfie soch samaj ke liya karo. Kahaan khade ho, yeh sab dekho and then you should take a selfie. Now, selfie le le re, Shahrukh Khan, Salman Khan ka gana. That is the heart and soul of that particular song. Now, if that part you pick up and you put it in your song, which is running into six minutes, this may result in copyright infringement. Because in a musical work, we are seeing what is the heart and soul of the music. In report, we are again seeing which is the substantive part of the report. So what you need to do is you will have to identify the work and then to see using, you know, the hearer test or the spectator test as to how much are you taking from there. You know, crazy for the cake film, maybe, you know, there was some thump, uh, music tha, which was repeated after, say, it's a six minute song and it is just for a few seconds only. But that is what is the main uh, soul of the song, if that is what you take away, just a kanta laga, kanta laga pura gana kisi ko nahi malum, lekin kanta laga is something uh, which is you know the way it is spoken and the way it is added. You will be infringing the copyright of someone. So here, I do not know what your question is, but if you take a picture, you are saying that from this picture you've made this. If there is a creativity, if there is substantial addition to it then there would be no violation, but otherwise there would be infringement of copyright. Okay. Now, you know, uh, as far as plagiarism is concerned, again, something very important for all of us, whether you write your uh, dissertations or your thesis or your assignments, there can be plagiarism of words, it can be of structure, concept, it can be of ideas. Plagiarism of ideas may not be permissible. But if you take an idea, there can never be a copyright infringement. Because on idea, there is no copyright. But on idea, there can be a plagiarism uh, policy which may be present. You know, there's something, uh, I don't know how many of you have heard about it. We all, you know, when we work for our promotions, uh, we sometimes use our own articles uh, previously written and we make use of them. This is what is called self-plagiarism. Now, self-plagiarism has a place under university for the purposes of promotions. But self-plagiarism has no place under copyright law because it is your work. It is your baby. You can use it the way you want to use it. Nobody can file a suit against you that you have used your own work and created a new work. Okay, so please understand there's a difference between copyright and plagiarism. And just for the benefit of all, if anyone wants to see, uh, DBIIT came up in September 2009 with draft model guidelines on implementation of IPR policy for academic institutions, uh, you know, which we are also uh, looking into. Secondly, UGC came up in 2018 with regulations, which are UGC promotion of academic integrity and prevention of plagiarism in higher educational institutions. Uh, the objective of this is to create <clears throat> awareness amongst people that you have to conduct your research in a responsible manner for the purposes of you know, promotion, et cetera. There has to be academic integrity, which has to be present. And they've also said 
that what uh, all uh, higher education institutions need to do is they need to create institutional mechanisms through education and training to facilitate responsible conduct, develop systems of plagiarism. And then uh, they have mentioned what plagiarism means. And what they've said is plagiarism means the practice of taking someone else's work or idea and passing them as one's own. You know, I still date, I've not been able to understand. Uh, I don't want to be a big mouth person, but uh, those who sometimes sit and draft, uh, again, you know, uh, I do not know whether I should say it on a public platform or not. Sometimes they're science people. They don't understand how humanities or social sciences work. Because for a science person, if you take an idea for the, you know, idea is something very important. If an idea is taken, uh, because science means doing of some experiment for some, you know, it may be an experiment, it may be a process, it may be for creation of a product, where inventions are there, new steps are taken into, uh, you know, new steps are introduced into the society. But if you cannot take anybody's idea, you know, this makes no sense. Because idea of, uh, say, you know, talking about plagiarism, idea of uh, living together, idea of divorce, all these ideas, any of these ideas, if you pick up and you start writing, do you think this regulation would mean anything? To me, it makes no sense. Anyway, we have to follow it uh, without making any sense. And that's what my view is. So what is not plagiarism? So I have a strong objection to regulation 2.1, which defines plagiarism. If it says plagiarism means the practice of taking someone else's work and passing them as one's own, it's perfectly fine. But the moment you word add the word idea, that is not fine because you're stopping people from writing and you're creating problems for the academicians. Regulation seven is what is not plagiarism. So when you, uh, you know, all quoted work, that is why we always say that when you write articles, you put it in quotes, because you know, when there is a plagiarism check, when you put it in quotes, it doesn't come in that uh, similarity check, uh, which is percentages which are given. All references, bibliographies, table of contents, preface, acknowledgements, uh, that is not plagiarism. All generic terms, laws, standard symbols, standard equations, there is no plagiarism. Uh, as far as regulation eight is concerned, this is very important. Uh, you see regulation eight, which is talking about penalties and punishments. You know, they've given that if you have similarities up to 10%, there is uh, no penalty. If there's similarity between 10 to 40%, you can be asked to withdraw your manuscript. If similarity is between 40% to 60%, you shall be asked to withdraw manuscript, denied the right to annual increment, not allowed to supervise, uh, be a supervisor for any uh, MPhil or PhD student for two years. So it is very important for us, you know, and, and there have been professors against whom uh, these penalties have been imposed. And if the penalties, uh, if the similarity is above 60%, then the punishment is enhanced to three years. Uh, uh, students may not be interested in this, but uh, I think those of you who have to go forward for higher education, you must know that these policies exist and we cannot uh, work against them. Um, so thank you. I can speak more, but I thought this is what uh, was sufficient for today. I've already spoken for more than an hour. So yes, I can have more questions. So there are some people who've written, let me just stop sharing this. All right, so we have some questions. Let's see, Mayam, you want to read them for me? Sure, sure, ma'am, we'll do that. Yes. Ma'am, there's a question, ma'am. We find a lot of social media influencers and content creators rampantly using music. That is creative work of some other person. Or they use culled out parts from new re news reports and prime time debates. Can such people be sued for infringement? Uh, you know, all these, if you look at your YouTube and any of these Google, etc., they have their IPR policies. And uh, if you go to their IPR policy, you will find that they have mentioned um, that you can bring uh, straight away suing would not help. You will have to tell them to take this down uh, for the purposes of because they're infringing your uh, copyright. And then uh, there is a procedure, then you can go to the court thereafter. 
So uh, whether you are, you know, whatever kind of uh, influencer you may be, you, one thing that I want to tell you is whatever laws are present for print media, they're equally applicable to the digital media. So when they're equally applicable to digital media, so if you cannot use work in print, similarly, you're not allowed to use work there. You know, um, uh, I, forgot, I don't know how some of these, sometimes what happens is people are, you know how this entire industry is working is people are sometimes paying money so that their work becomes uh, famous. So when you give your own consent or your license, then it would not, it's always better that you enter into a, some kind of a written agreement. Because, you know, when you read this Copyright Act, you will find most of the things are subject to agreement. So when you agree to do it, then it would not be violation. But if you don't agree to do it, there is no agreement. Then, of course, all these things result in violations. Uh, uh, see, camcording. Uh, especially film Sometimes uh, these people, security people, they even check your shirts. Uh, once what happened, is this, this is a real thing. shirt So, uh, you know, the security person said that your shirt is broken. So, there was And it was not basically a ladai which had happened. There was a hidden camera there. So, you go for the first show and you record the movie and then you show it. This is what is called camcording. You know, every now and then we keep hearing people are asking for more and more laws to come. I personally feel, uh, you know, even for camp recording, there was there is no need for a new law. We can deal with it under the copyright law itself. So there are many uh, situations where uh, we really don't need something. We can, you know, as we have dynamic injunctions, which do not have a place in CPC, but Delhi High Court built up that jurisprudence. Similarly, as far as uh, these technologies are concerned, we can build up uh, jurisprudence if the will is there. Uh, but then, you know, there is bar and the bench and the industry and everybody having vested interests. Uh, but yes, coming to your question, uh, these are violations. These are infringements. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma we have another question, ma'am. Um, yes. Why is the producer of the songs are given the rights and not the artist? <laughs> For one of the example that the T-Series -series claims their rights over the songs made by others. All right. Uh, you know, there's something which is called cover version. Uh, these are what T-series did was the cover versions meaning. Suppose uh, Lata Mangeshkar has sung a song. And, you know, first of all, let me tell you who has a copyright in a song. If you look at a song, the words written is literary work. It is not a musical work. Then there is a music which is added to it. There is a music composer. And this music composer is having copyright on the music. Now, as I told you before also, uh, okay, your question is, I think, I, if I understand correctly, it is regarding cover version. Now, what happened was, suppose uh, Lata Mangeshkar has sung a song. What this series started with was, they brought a newcomer or someone who's not Lata Mangeshkar singing Lata Mangeshkar songs and on the cassette, what the first of the T-series was started, there cassettes milti thi. and on the cassette you will find somewhere niche chota sa likha hua that it is uh, sung by so and so and on top you will find Lata Mangeshkar songs and Lata Mangeshkar ki picture. Cover versions were permissible after two years of bringing into uh, the public song. Now, this was legalized. But then what happened, uh, the, again, you know, these, uh, the composers and the singers, they uh, made representations saying that cover versions are misrepresenting. It is not me singing, but I'm shown as, you know, as if I'm singing and that is how people are buying those cassettes. So there was again a change which was made and uh, it was section 521J, I think, which was removed from the Copyright Act. It was deleted. And now there is a provision under section 31, uh, one of these ABCD, I'm forgetting the uh, alpha numeral used with it, where cover versions are permitted. But how they are permitted is you cannot misrepresent now. 
So now you, we, if you look at all these cover versions, you will find that it does not say Muhammad Rafi or Lata Mangeshkar. You cannot misrepresent on the thing. And then there is there are certain conditions which are given. And the conditions are cover version can come only after five years. You have to have at least 50,000 copies which need to be released. And there has to be an advance giving to the producer of the songs that this is how we are coming out with it. If all those conditions are fulfilled, then it is legal. Otherwise, it amounts to infringement. So T-Series started, uh, I would say, a kind of, you know, if you look at our own society, entertainment is only through Bollywood. You know, if you go to foreign countries, you will find that every Saturday, Sunday, they're having their weekends out. But do you think common people like us can afford a weekend out? The answer is no. So what something very good done by T-Series was, they floated the cassettes freely available at a lower price. But then, of course, if you look at the other side of the picture, the creator is having a problem. And because creator is a stronger lobby, and now the amendments are there in the act. So, yes, what else? Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma there's, there's one of the questions which I've uh, received uh, from one of our team made. We have a few questions over Facebook Live as well. Ma'am, uh, they are asking, ma'am, are the opinion polls copyrighted? Is there a provision? And how is it available everywhere without permissions? See, opinion polls, see, uh, again, you know, uh, copyright is, I again repeat, copyright is in the literary work, dramatic work, musical work, artistic work. Opinion polls are, you're taking opinions. So there is no question of copyright. But if your opinion, say, for example, Times Now is giving some opinion poll. That you pick up and give on your, say, India Today or whatever, on your side, that would amount to an infringement. But just an opinion poll is not amounting to any infringement. You're taking opinions of people. You cannot stop uh, the society to grow like this. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma we have a couple of questions as well. I think these two will be the last one for today. Uh, um, with regard to film piracy, typical breach happening abroad, what legal recourse do Indian copyright holders have? Uh, hey, uh, see, uh, we have, uh, uh, I cannot give this answer in detail, but we have, uh, you must have heard of WIPO, which is World Intellectual Property, uh, you know, organization. Uh, they are having their mediation and arbitration centers. So if it is a case of uh, inter-country, we have... Mom, you are on mute, ma'am. All right. So we have, you know, this is a question of private international law. Uh, where we have bilateral treaties and uh, we have, uh, if we are a member of uh, WIPO, how mediation and arbitration works, that becomes a completely uh, total jurisdictional issue under private international law. So that will be difficult for me to answer now at the moment. Ma'am, just the last question for today's session, ma'am. Yes. Does distribution of material for free over which any author, producer has a copyright over amounts to an infringement and attract penalty, even though the distribution of such material did not attract any monetary advantages. Mm, okay. If I've understood it correct, uh, I am, my uncle has written something and I'm distributing it to people. Okay. Now you are not charging any money for it. All right. No doubt you're not charging any money for it. But as I gave you Article 19 of 9 of the Bern Convention, and what it says is that it should not conflict with the normal exploitation of the work, and it should not unreasonably prejudice the legitimate interest of the author. Now, when you make freely some work available, what have you done? You're affecting the author. He will not be able to get money for it. One. Secondly, so that means this kind of an exception we cannot have in our act. 
but you doing it is you are infringing the right of reproduction of the author. आप पैसे नहीं चार्ज कर रहे हो बट उसका राइट ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन तो अफेक्ट कर रहे हो ना यू डोंट हैव द राइट टू रिप्रोड्यूस यू डोंट हैव द राइट टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूट यू डोंट हैव द राइट टू मल्टीप्लाई सो व्हेन यू आर डूइंग दिस यू आर इन्फ्रिंचिंग द कॉपीराइट ऑफ समवन बिकॉज मनी इज नॉट द इश्यू यू आर नॉट अलाउड टू डू दैट एक्टिविटी ओके द प्रॉब्लम इज आई कांट इवन सी द फेसेस ऑफ पर्संस हु आर आस्किंग बिकॉज आई डोंट नो whether they are satisfied or not i hope i hope ma'am everyone is satisfied because they don't have a cross question to your answers they they might have they do have the facility of you know again asking the questions somebody they, has uh, written this uh, sam haldigram ke samsung versus apple all these are uh, you know trademark cases so we uh, another thing you know uh, people say ipr 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 has no meaning at all ipr you have to distinguish are you talking about trademarks are you talking about traditional knowledge are you talking about patents are you talking about copyright because then accordingly you will have to pick up an act and see uh, where is the, you know uh, if with the kind of system that we have the most important part in a suit is the prayer jaise hum bhagwan ko pray kar rahe hain ki bhagwan mujhe ghar de de aur chahiye mere ko husband hai na to wo ghar de dega to koi mere ko husband to na mila na तो इसलिए क्या है कि तुमने राइट right प्रेयर मांगनी है सो so, हल्दीराम का या एप्पल का या जो सैमसंग का जो केस है वो ट्रेडमार्क में है वो कॉपीराइट में नहीं है तो योर प्रेयर्स वुड नॉट बी आंसर्ड बाय दी जजेस इफ यू डोंट आस्क द राइट प्रेयर थैंक यू सो मच मैम दिस मैम दिस इज लास्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम टीम पार्क मैम इफ यू कुड प्लीज सजेस्ट अस सम जर्नल्स बुक्स और ब्लॉग्स वेयर द स्टूडेंट्स कैन स्टार्ट रीडिंग विद क्रिटिक्स टू कॉपीराइट लॉज and they can you know increase the ip spicy go to ic spicy mondak ye sare jo hai intellectual property type karoge lots of blogs come mondak is most of these law firms you know uh, they are keep they keep writing about the new judgments uh, so i think read that up uh, the first thing that you should always do is pick up annual survey of indian law institute the annual survey of indian law institute will give in crux you know judgments and critiques also of it and most of the law firms are also uh, writing any law firms name when you pick up ipr law firm they will uh, give you the you know and read my book on copyright law that's definitely ma'am definitely so journals you can also ask them kar diya to in the in the please. library we have ptc patent trademark cases which is you know it says patent trademark cases but there are a lot of copyright cases patent cases to bahut kam hai more of copyright cases and trademark cases which are given there read that indian kanoon pe jao har samay dekh lo you will get all the new judgments and everything there ip spice is a very good blog thank you so much ma'am for your insights and your time uh, i request uh, ruchita ma'am to take over uh, this is just a formality ma'am so like i mentioned uh, in the beginning that uh, i am really i was really very excited and very happy to get an insight from you and uh, you know as a formality i will have to propose the vote of thanks so yes do that <laughs> of course of course ma'am so i think from uh, being very enthusiastic as a listener as well as as a teacher got to know a lot of things ipr is not an area of my speciality so i know very less of ipr in fact uh, while you were delivering the lecture uh, you know we are running out of time so i will sit with you or maybe call you just right after this i know you are very busy i have some anytime. questions from my end as well any time so i am uh, i am there in the office anyone can walk in any time and talk to me my only problem is people don't come to me to talk to me <laughs> no ma'am uh, but yes as a formal vote of thanks first of all uh, you being being the pic i think first of all i would like to thank on behalf of team pass for being so supportive not only for this event that you have graced our uh, you know platform but it is also about all other programs whenever we have approached to you the way that you have helped us is really something uh, which is beyond words so you have always been very enthusiastic zealous and very supportive and encouraging of everything that we have wanted to do and we have done a lot of things in the recent past so i think i would like to take this opportunity and through this platform thank you for being so supportive overall 
and uh, of course as far as today's program is concerned we really wanted to listen to you we have had lot of students even in the online uh, when we because we were zooming it uh, because we were uh, you know also streaming it online so we had lot of uh, you know visitors viewers there as well so i am sure the numbers itself speak so uh, thank you so much thank you uh, team pack because this is something i can never forget because uh, the students really put in a lot of effort for every program uh, the clc office and i think entire clc team uh, yes one thing which i want family. i was telling my uncle ruchita is that i wanted to keep a dance session also and that is uh, <laughs> tell the students to do a few things wo mera sanskar channel mein kisi aur din kholungi thank you so much and uh, my god bless you and i hope that you keep on doing these uh, you know activities keep on calling more and more people mere liye to i have told you no is not there in my dictionary you bring a proposal and there i will implement it bilkul ma'am thank you so much ma'am we are we are thank already you, working on some proposals we'll bring bring it to you sure. ma'am thank you okay. thank you so much ma'am thank, thank you ma'am thank you, ma thank you. Thank you. Thank you.